Howdy viewers, welcome back. I like to give myself a daily reminder of why my wife will live at least 20 years longer than me. So today, on a Saturday afternoon, while she's out getting a pedicure and shopping, I'm down here working on this greasy old loader. And we're not quite ready to give up on it just yet. My brother really wants to get it going. He's uh, got his own kind of construction, earth moving type company. And, you know, he's been at it a couple years, but he still needs more equipment to get things done. And he really needs a machine like this to load out bulk materials into a dump truck. And, you know, we're not wealthy people, so if we can throw this thing together on a, a shoestring budget, that'll suit us just fine. I asked my dad, he said that for sure this valve cover will come off without raising the cab, but yeah, I'm not sure exactly how. Okay, I think I see how you're supposed to do it. Somebody's already been here and they cut themselves an access panel right there behind the seat. So it looks like all I gotta do is take this flat panel, a couple bolts loose on this flat panel here that makes kind of like a floor behind the seat and zip a couple bolts out of that access panel that they cut in there and then I can just take the valve cover right off so yeah <laughs> that's one way to do it Cool. Makes the job really easy when the last guy didn't bolt down the cab. There we go. Well, that doesn't look too good. Guess we shouldn't be surprised, right? Yeah, looks like the water must have run down the back of the cab, maybe. Got inside that valve cover. Yeah, the valve springs don't look too bad. It's just the rocker rocker arms took a took a hit. So yeah, guess we should have expected that. Okay, so I had a guy contact me through the comments here on YouTube. And by the way, I don't always reply to all the comments, but I do read all of them. So if you type something down there in the comment box. Good chance that I'm going to read it. Anyway, I had a guy send me a comment saying that he's used a method to free up an engine before where you basically fill one of the cylinders with grease and use a grease gun to hydraulically force the piston down and unseize the engine. And in his words, it'll either un it'll either free it up or it'll break something. And I don't see where we really have anything to lose with this engine. So most likely if we get it freed up, we're still going to have to do a, a ton of work to it. But uh, even if we change out the engine entirely, it would be a lot easier with the engine loose because the, the torque converter bolts, you know, you kind of have to be able to bar the engine over to get those out. And I don't know if there's room to get the engine out with the torque converter attached. So anyway, we're going to try it. Like I said, I don't know what we have to lose. So let me get set up and... And we'll take a whack at it here. All right, guys, I hope you can hear me over the wind. This is an adapter that I have for a compression testing kit. Should screw right into the spark plug hole. And then we go from quarter MPT down to eighth inch MPT and a grease fitting. And we're gonna go right in here to cylinder number three. And you can see that the valves are closed so it's on its compression stroke. Now I just stuck something down in there. The piston's pretty close to the top, so we may not have a whole lot of leverage, but it's the best that we're going to do. So, yeah, 
I think what I'm going to try is I'll leave it a little bit loose for now. And we'll squirt some grease in there. Hopefully purge all the air out. And then... Yeah, I guess we'll give her the, we'll give her the beans. So I had never thought of this personally, so I'm glad I got that comment. I did ask my dad about it. He said he has heard of it before, especially for guys with like the, the old hit and miss engines, single cylinders, using grease to try to free them up. Well, I feel like it was working pretty good until I blew the head gasket and all the grease came right out between the head and the block. So, I mean, it's no big deal. The head gasket was bad on this engine anyway, but we're not going to be able to use that cylinder anymore. So I think I'm going to try a different strategy. I'm going to come over here to cylinder one and we'll just loosen the adjuster on the rocker arm here to close the valve and we'll try, try the same thing but with cylinder one. Well, I'm not having much luck with this three scan method so I don't know I'll give this valve a few wax here before we completely condemn it but I don't know I, I got a hunch that maybe the, the valve is rusty you know because this one was held open so maybe this one's a little rusty and it just isn't it isn't sealing up, so we'll give it another shot, but it's not looking too good. Well guys, I don't know what to say. I, I think it's a sound method, but it's not going to work on this engine. I guess my feeling about this is that the, the idea is sound. And actually, over here on cylinder number one, I was able to pump enough grease into that thing and hold enough pressure that I could actually turn the damper a little bit, a couple degrees. But as soon as you let off the pressure, it would just spring back. So all it was doing was torquing the, you know, twisting up the crankshaft. And it was not enough to break the cylinder loose. So, yeah, I don't think it's a, a problem with the method. I think it's just a problem with this engine. It's, it's just too far gone. So I went ahead and dropped the oil pan. Let's go down there and I'll, I'll give you a little tour. It looks uh, about as bad as this. Of course, I've got world-class accommodations down here. Okay, I don't know how much you'll be able to see. You can't get the oil pan out because of this cross member right here. So you cannot remove the oil pan without taking the whole engine out. But I think we can see what we need to see. So hopefully we can see what we need to see. There's cylinder number one. You can see the grease actually squeezing through the oil return holes in the piston. Here's number two. It's incredibly crusty. You can see rust and scale on the cylinder wall on that one. So cylinder number three does not look too bad. That's the one that had the valves closed. And that's the first one that we tried to, to pump grease into. Well, you might not be able to see, but four cylinder four doesn't look too bad either. All right, this is really hard to see. That's cylinder number five. The whole cylinder wall on that one is all scaly, rusty, nasty. So we can't see cylinder number six. It's blocked by something here, but I snuck up in there and looked at it. Cylinder six doesn't look too bad. The valves were closed on that cylinder. So I'd say for certain the Piston number two and number five are seized. And that corresponds to what I'm seeing with the, you know, the fluid that we dumped down the spark plug holes. Uh, it's been at least three weeks now since we did that. And 
cylinder two and cylinder five have not gone down at all. So, yeah, sorry, there's just no good news on this engine. Well, I just don't have a lot of good news about this engine. I did find the serial number tag on the side of the block. This is a C301. So that would be the engine, I believe, that was used in the, the gas version of an 806 tractor. And those were, those were terrible engines. So, uh, unfortunately, that is a parent bore engine. It does not have dry sleeves like the smaller, the smaller version of these engines. So it wouldn't be possible to do like an in-frame overhaul on this thing. Because even if we get the pistons unstuck, you know, the, the bores are going to be in terrible shape. We won't have compression on those cylinders. So the only way to fix it would be to remove the engine, you know, knock the pistons out of it somehow, and then get the engine bored. And we don't know, it might already be bored, you know, 20, 30 thousandths oversize. You know, who knows? We don't know anything about this engine. So probably more likely the, the thing to do would be to get our hands on another engine, a used engine, and just, just swap it out because yeah, we don't know what we're gonna find when we crack this thing open, so. So anyway, I don't wanna seem like a quitter, you know, and give up on this thing too easily, but I'm not gonna spend any more time on it. It's not worth it. Uh, I don't think it would be worthwhile to have the engine board, you know, put oversized pistons in it, anything like that. You know, the machine work alone on this engine could probably, it probably cost us a thousand bucks to get everything, you know, tuned up as far as machine work. And then you're looking at another probably close to a thousand bucks worth of parts. There's no way we're putting two grand into this ratty old machine. It's just not worth it. So if we can find a used engine that runs for maybe a thousand, twelve hundred bucks, something like that, maybe we'll do it. But as far as the current engine that's in it, we're at a stopping point. So I'm going to slam the valve cover back on, put a couple bolts in the oil pan, and I'm going to walk away and forget about it for a while. So yeah. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I know there's a lot of new subscribers, and it's pretty cool. So leave me a comment, tell me what you think. Uh, you know, I know a lot of guys have a lot of ideas about how to get a stuck engine unstuck. It's kind of a challenge on this engine. We've tried a lot of things. We've tried various concoctions in the cylinders. We've tried putting a, a bar on the front pulley, you know, the nut on the front pulley. We've tried pry bars on the flex plate, the, the ring gear. We've tried, you know, the grease method. We can't pull it because it has a torque converter, so that won't work. Uh, there just aren't a whole lot of, you know, other options. And honestly, even if we got the thing unstuck, it still needs to be rebuilt because the, the damage on those cylinder walls is just too too much. It's not like we could ever get it freed up and then, you know, start it up and drive it out of here. It's it's going to have to have some major engine work to ever run again. So. Anyway, thanks guys for watching, and I don't know what's going to be next. <laughs>